name of the show is The Way to Go. My name is Alan Bendich. I'm going to be your host. Tonight we have a very special guest. He's a martial arts actor. His name is Mr. Paul Mermondo. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my I pleasure. So, Paul, um, have you always been a martial artist? When did you start, when did you start martial arts? Well, it's, it's kind of interesting. I started when I was, when I was really young. Yes. Um, and I guess most of the people have a similar story. They started when they were, were getting bullied, but the bullying was so severe when I was younger that, um, you know, nowadays it's more common that you, you would see in the, in the media. Right. A lot of kids wanted to hurt themselves, but I was really young at the time. And, you know, the bullying was so severe that I didn't want to go to school, of course. And I just really, you know, I wasn't happy with myself. So if it wasn't for a you know, time when I just happened to see a martial art movie with the legendary Bruce Lee wow. on, on, you know, on the screen, I would not have... He saved my life. Wow. So I know it's kind of cliche to say, but he kind of saved my life. When I, when I seen this small gentleman, you know, beating all of these, these, these guys up with three times, four times his size, right. it kind of gave me some sort of hope, you know. And the, the ironic part about it is, even though that's why I initially started the martial arts, right. um, once I really got to a point where I thought I could defend myself, where I felt comfortable with defending myself, it kind of then took a back seat and it just was a passion of mine. And I've been doing it for more than 30 years now. So um, when you were a kid, was, was the bullying happening in school? Was that the situation? Yeah, I, didn't, I mean, it was, I was the young, always the smallest kid in class. I was too. Yeah, yeah I was this, the smallest kid, always in the front of the line, and Me too. probably not the sharpest tool in the shed, you know, probably not the smartest kid in the class, so, um, and very quiet, right. always very timid. So um, I guess I was a perfect target right. uh, for bullies. And, you know, and when you're young, and you don't really have an outlet. And even back then, I guess bullying, it was prominent. Bullying's not like a new, um, a new element or a new something new. It's been around forever. But back when I was younger, it's like if you got bullied and you went home and you told your parents, they would like just pat you on the behind and say, go ahead, you know, right. boys will be boys, man up, you know, that type of a thing. And my dad, who was an ex-sergeant and an ex-boxer and a tough guy himself, he sort of didn't, he wasn't really nurturing when it came to the bullying. It was like, you know, listen, if you go out there and somebody bullies you and you get hit right. and you don't hit back and you come back over here, then I'm going to give it to you twice as bad. So, and I wasn't, at that point, I wasn't sort of into my, you know, I wasn't really confident that I could defend myself. So it was kind of a, a big crisis for me, you know, at growing up. So, uh, but, but you passed that, you know, you were able to, so how did you, I mean, how did you take that step from fear, I guess, to walking into the dojo, whatever it was, you know. I mean, how did how did you find out about it? Um, well, like I said, I was, I was watching, sitting home one night, and yeah. there was basically two cable channels back in those days. Right. So I guess it kind of shows my age. Right. Um, and this, this this young this small guy came on. His Bruce Lee came on, right. and I'm watching this movie, and I'm watching this guy do these amazing kicks and, and beat up all these people. So of course, you know. I know it's a movie and everything like that, but it was very motivating to know that there was something out there. But where did you go? I mean, uh, so well, then I went to my parents, and I grew up. You know, my mother was I was considered a, mother, a mama's boy, right. so I went to my mom first, and I said, "Listen, I, I really want to do this martial art thing. I, you know, I seen this guy on TV, and you know, and probably at those times there's maybe like one school, two schools in the whole neighborhood, you know. So I had begged her to do it, and she was very overprotective, right. overbearing. So she told me, you know, you're gonna probably get hurt." And my dad was a little bit more into the uh, to boxing and stuff like that. So they sort of had a, you know, um, their own sort of philosophy of what I should do. And right. they shunned it off. But it took me a lot of, a long time to convince my mom. Finally, it was like a birthday gift or something like that. They allowed me to go into my first dojo. And, right. and from there on, and, you know, everybody always, like, I, whenever I get interviewed, they're like, oh, you, you were probably great because, you know, I'm considered a really good martial artist. So right. they thought... You know, and I was not. I was probably <laughs> the worst kid in the class, but I worked harder than everybody else. And that's and that's the key, because uh, and and you also seem to be very humble. You, I mean, I'm sure you're, you're you are exceptional. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll, a little later we'll take a look at uh, some of your uh, your work in film. So okay, so you you continued doing your martial arts. Uh, did you? You were, you're now a teacher. How long did, did you teach while you were taking martial arts? Did they use kids in the, cl in the school to help teach at the that kids? Time, at that time, no, I was just basically a student. Right. And I'd worked, really, like I said, I worked really hard to try to get to a certain, certain point where I, you know, where I felt that I was good. Um, and when I did, I did, I wanted to become a teacher. And right. 
where, the school where I went to was very close-knit and it was very traditional. Right. So they had this sort of their teachers, so it was very hard for me to do it. And the, and the ironic story is that I um, ended up going on my own and starting to teach a couple of kids in the neighborhood who were going through similar, similar things that I was going through. So right. at that time I felt really like I was giving back. That's so cool. they would come into my, my basement and I set it up to be like my own makeshift dojo. Right. And the instructor got wind of it and it was a whole um, conflict. Right. And he had, at the time I was asked to leave the school. And, um, but it was, it, was, uh, it was an interesting thing for me because most people probably would have quit. And then I had, I had looked out for different, for different teachers. And, so uh, so you, you, learned, you got into martial arts and became an expert, right? Uh, to, when did you, uh, what, what did you do with the martial arts? I mean, did, you, did this lead you to other um, avenues, to, to other opportunities? I mean, uh, yes, it did. I mean, as I said earlier, I was a very timid, timid and shy guy. I right. was never in a, any plays in right. school or anything like that. Matter of fact, I was, I'm sorry, I lied. I was in one play. Right. I was a tomato. And I, I <laughs> with no lines, and I actually held up one of those oak tag cards at the That's time. That's great. But, uh, you know, so, but we would do these, to, in order to get students, right. we would do these, these de demonstrations and stuff like that. So when I got proficient enough and I felt really comfortable at it, we would go out and book ourselves in these little gigs to do these demonstrations. Well. I started a new program at one of these places, and I decided, because I guess at that time I was just beginning to get media savvy, and I had called up the local paper, you know, and said we were doing this demonstration, would you come and cover it? Lo and behold, the next day the reporter comes over, and I, I, I did something, I used to do something in my act, that was to jump over a row of swords, so I decided to jump over this row of swords, and I guess he found it interesting, so he took this beautiful shot of me, caught me jumping over it. About a couple days later, I was, at my house, and I get a phone call from my one of my best friend's fathers. He said, "You know, you're on the cover of the paper." Oh, wow. I was like, "Wow, that's pretty cool." Didn't think nothing of it. Right. Care, you know, it was cool, but that was about as far as it went. Right. And then I started. I was teaching at the time in my basement. So, as I was teaching, I get this phone call. I didn't get the phone call. One of my students picked up the phone. He says, and he tells me, he says, "There's a strange guy on the phone. He's claiming to be John Stamos's manager and oh, wow. some other guy's manager. He wants to talk to you about some film work and." First, I thought he was, you know, some some prank or something like that. So I got on the phone with him and uh, met, ended up meeting him for lunch, and we we talked about he was Chuck Norris and Jean Claude Van Damme at the time. I think it was Van Damme at the time, and and doing, you know, going that route. And I was like, I don't know, I'm kind of shy, and I don't really think this is. And he's like, No, no, you, you know. And he saw some other stuff, some other videos that I had. And he's like, No, you really, you could be the next, you know, the next one. And well, lo and behold, he the acting bug bit me, you know. So he took some acting classes and stuff like that, and that's how I got basically started, right. just by accident. So uh, what, uh, so you started, what was this, what did, what was your first film? Ooh, first thing, the first thing I did was a commercial, actually it was a commercial from a Japanese commercial. Cool. It was a credit card commercial, and it was an American lead guy, martial art guy, as the lead, I have no idea why. And I was in the, my first commercial was a Hitachi Japanese commercial, by the way, in the 80s. But anyway, I'm very, sorry to, very, very interesting. Yeah, that's funny. We both have the first commercial as a Japanese commercial. And it, and it paid really well. Yes. And it actually was my first waiver into the, into the union. Excellent. And I, you know, it was pretty cool. And then there was a, they were, I, we saw a casting notice, and one of my favorite directors who directed Jean Claude Van Damme, Keith Strandberg, his name is, and he was directing this movie, and I was like, oh, I have to get into this. So I had called at that time my, one of my agents, and he, he'd, 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 he couldn't get me in for an audition. So at the time we had fax machines, there was no email. So he faxed over, I faxed my headshot over some action shots, and he was impressed. So I came in, and I had to audition for him, and I got my first role, which was in a, in a movie called American Shaolin, King of the Kickboxer 3. And I was um, in the opening scene, and I get beat up. Cool. So it was my entry into, and that was my my second gig, and I got my union card. So, so you become a member of SAG, right? Yes. And you're moving all, you're moving right along, and so life just keeps on going in a beautiful way, right? And nothing, no, there's no nothing happens in your life that would be like a roadblock or to stop you along the way, right? You would think. You in would a, think, right? In a storybook world, you would right. think, but unfortunately. As I was getting more popular with the martial arts, not so much obviously with the acting, but I was building up a really good following because I was doing these demonstrations. I was in this uh, show called The Oriental World of Self-Defense, which they held at Madison Square Garden and Essica. Right. And I would be on all these live shows doing martial arts, and for some reason it was, it was a little more impressive sometimes to people, the live stuff, than actually watching 
you know, the movie people. Mm -hmm. So I would always get these offers and stuff like that. So I, I ended up at that point in my career getting picked up by a William Morris agency. Oh, wow. I, the, 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 That's the, like awesome. Yeah. That's like and so God's I was like hand the, coming down and saying, you're next. So I'm like the first, <laughs> well, at the time was like one of the first martial artists to have a major agency. So I thought this was phenomenal because I started to study the business of filmmaking, right. which a lot of people don't know that that's where I'm really proficient. I started to study, you know, and I was like, oh, we started to learn about movie packaging and all that stuff. Right. And I'm ecstatic. So, you know, I'm thinking it's great. You know, what a big agency. I didn't, I think I got one offer from that whole time. <laughs> it didn't work out well. But the one film that we were putting together uh, was an, you know, big, a big film, actually. And we packaged together some, some, some good talent. And I was all set to, I would say, co-star in it. You know, one of the main le the main roles awesome. in, in the movie, and I'm coming back from the old limelight. I think it was the limelight in the, in the city. I remember and, that club. Yeah, and I'm coming back, and it's raining out, and I come through the Battery Tunnel, going from Manhattan to Brooklyn, and I get hit by a, a hit and run driver, and he takes off, and my car spins around probably once. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't hit anything, thank God, but my back, you know, was out of whack. The discs are out of place, and all I remember from that point on, sometimes, is just being like in a in a stretch where they, they sort of like hold your neck down so you don't nothing, you know. And I remember the first thing I asked the, he wasn't really a doctor. I guess he's one of the tech guys or one of the doctors. And I said, you know, what happened? He said, oh, you were in a car accident. I said, oh, I have to go. I have to teach tomorrow. I have to go train tomorrow. He's like, um, I really think you should concentrate on walking first, you know, and and other things. I don't think that's really should be a priority. And. It devastated me from that point on, and I had I lost my schools. When was that. this? This was probably 93, 92, wow. 93, in that, in that range. And, uh, and there goes my, my movie office, <laughs> you know. So I'm out of the business after that point for, you know, obviously I had a commission, I'm in traction and, right. and physical rehab, and uh, I worked myself back pretty well, but at that time, I, all my students, you know, my business had, had diminished and stuff like that, and I was out of business, like, you know, I guess like you told me earlier that you, you had a business for a while. Right. And then all of a sudden, um, few, I'm saying in, in, what was it, 2000 and... Well, how'd you, how'd you get back to walking? I mean, that's well, the... Well, that, I mean. <laughs> back to walking was, was, was quite, quite difficult, but, um, you know, the martial arts builds up, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to sound like I'm preaching, but it builds up such a... Uh, self-confidence in you, such like this ability to do anything and to believe in yourself. I know. And it, it built up this desire that you know that I wasn't going to you know just lay there. And but there was part of my time when I was depressed and I was in bed for quite months and months at a time. Right. You know, I mean, I would walk to the bathroom, but there would be nothing. I, as far as kicking or punching, that there wasn't. And you know, I, I believe a lot in, in in you know acupuncture, and I believe a lot in um, Eastern philosophy. So. Um, acupuncture helped and chiropractic helped. I never had surgery on my back. That's great. Never had any surgeries or anything like that. And I was able to, to get back to, to capacity after a long wait. You know, and um, so uh, maybe we could uh, talk about some of your current uh, projects. I mean, well, what, bef before your current, what was the one right before the, your current project? Well, the project I did before this one is was called Double Fist. And that's basically, was the, that was the movie that I was preparing to do prior to the car accident. So that was a, a really important film for me to do because, you know, when I, I'm here I am, a lot older than mm -hmm. I was. And it just, I have this thing that I wanted to finish what I started. I hear you. And I like to preach to all my students that you, 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 you focus on something, you, you finish it. Right. So in, two, I think it was 2012, 2011, 2012, we started it, the project, and it took us over two years because it was an independent project at this point. There was no studios or anything, anything involved. And, and we just basically, we, we shot it, and we did the best we could. And that leads us to your, your most current project, right? I mean, uh, and tell us a little bit about it. What, what's it called? Uh, Bound by Debt. Um, it's a, it's another, it's an action film, but it's got a, a little bit of a mob sort of, sort of, you know, undertone on it because the, the lead villain, the lead, um, uh, yeah, the lead villain in the movie is, is a mobster. Right. And, uh, he makes life difficult for myself and my brother, who's played by uh, Bobby Chiazuli, um, in it from Real Housewives of New Jersey. Uh, he's my oh, co-star in it. That's a pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's a really good actor, actually. That's really excellent. Good. So, yeah, we have a good chemistry. And anyway, the, the, so the, the film's about two brothers who, uh, they're not really, at this point in, the, in their life, they're, they're distant from each other. Right. But um, 
my uh, Bobby's character has a gambling problem. So I basically come out and save the day. I don't okay, want to give too much but, of it yeah, away. Don't give it too much away. <laughs> you know, uh, would you like to share with our audience? Maybe a, a, you, you brought a little teaser for the show, right? I did, actually. We, we just filmed this, this clip, actually, and it's the first time anybody's seeing it. So. so this is awesome. So is it okay if I share? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at Paul Marmondo in action in Bound for Debt. Bound, Bound by Debt. By Debt. Sorry. Bound by Debt. <laughs> Big fight this week. Could be looking at 30 grand. Sorry, John. I can't fight. What? Are you kidding me? Come on. We gotta get you into the gym. No, no, no. Really. I can't fight anymore. See, after the last couple of fights, I started to get some blurriness in my eyes. So I went to go see the doctor. And he checked out my eye. He told me I have a torn iris. He said if I fight again, I could possibly go blind. And with all due respect, 30G just isn't enough for me to go blind, man. Well, maybe you should come see my doctor. Thanks for the offer, man. I got a couple things going, but I appreciate it. Look, I'll tell Mr. Russo, but he's not gonna be happy. Thanks, man. Good luck, man. That was pretty awesome, man. I'm very impressed. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, Thank and the you. sound was great. It's, uh, and, but you, you really, uh, did you, do you ever hurt yourself when you're doing stuff like that? Or, uh? All the time, I actually cut my fingers just filming that scene the other day. And when you're doing a scene like that, I mean, you're not aware of anything else around you, but, I, I mean, tell me about it. Uh, tell me what the, the actor in you is like, I mean, when you're absolutely. filming Absolutely. Well, I mean, my roles, they're, they're not Shakespearean roles, but they're roles that um, are written by my wife, who knows my personality. So she'll write something that's pretty. What's your wife's name? My wife's name's Anna. So, okay. so she'll write something that's that'll fit my sort of fit my character, in a way. But when I get into a role, I really have to. You, you really embrace it, and you don't feel anything. There's right. the adrenaline's pumping, as you know. Isn't it? It's like, isn't that like the best feeling in the world? It's the greatest thing because you could be whoever, whoever the character is. Right. So you for that moment, you could forget about everything. And you just within the moment. There's no pain. There's no. There's nothing. It's just like euphoria, right? Exactly. I mean, it's the best feeling. In the best world. feeling in the world. So. Um, did you just start filming this? I mean, how far along are you in this? Uh... Um, by Saturday, we'll be 50% wow. complete. Yeah. What's the shooting? I mean, is it an hour? Is it, it's a feature, right? Feature length film, yes, yes. yes. So, in fact, I can't wait to start filming with you. <laughs> you have a role in it. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. But I'm really, I mean, to me, I mean, I appreciate that. And uh, and I do appreciate it a lot. But to me, the, the most important thing is to, to know that, you know, you, you could have been stopped in life, right? I mean, you, you, uh, that car accident, might have stopped many people, but it didn't stop you. And I have another friend who's a martial artist, uh, my friend Pete Pissarra, and he's, he sat here a couple of times. He was in, in Scriptless, and he was in a car accident, and it to he totally destroyed his shoulder. And he also, he's able to, I mean, it took him a while, but he's back. So I, when you were talking about how, you know, like, people in martial arts, you know, um, have that will, whatever it is. It, it, it is. I mean, it's it's true. I mean, I wish I could. I, I just got arthritis. I wish I could just get beyond the pain. But I mean, this is much more than arthritis. I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it's when you do martial arts, the discipline that you you develop. Yes. It just it's such a so amazing, and it's kind of hard to explain to somebody who's never felt right. it or done it before. Right. But it's it's just a, it's just something that you you really should you know every, I think everybody should experience it not to sound like a walking advertisement for martial but I think it's one of the most positive things that a person could do for themselves now do you do the choreography of this the fight scenes or how does it work um, most you know? of the time I do the choreography this particular film I actually have somebody help me his name is Brian Wecker and he's a, a really good martial artist so I actually could alleviate some of the the stress from what I'm doing so so uh, so on this 
project. Are you just acting, or because uh, your wife your wife wrote the script, right? Correct. She wrote it. She's actually directing it. Oh, cool. Um, we both produce it. I've yes. been producing for a long time, so we both produce it. But I, you know, one of the great things is I have such a great crew this time, right. and a great cast as well that I can actually just concentrate on performing. So how do you get the locations? That's something I would, locations, that's my nightmare usually. And I'm the one who has to get all the locations for my, my shoots all the time. You know, um, people are pretty supportive this time around. I don't know whether it's just luck. I'm very spiritual, so I don't know if it just happens to be that it's my time or, but you know, locations are very difficult because people just in general, you know, don't want you to use their location for filming, especially on an indie film. Right. If it's Hollywood, it's a whole oh, different it. ball yeah, game. They'll close down check, business. Pay check. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But when you're filming something that's independent and you have a very limited budget, it's quite oh. difficult. But I've been. It's so amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, if you, the person you saw in the scene there, his name is, um, I don't know his last name. I just know him by Joe Broadway. But he uh, <laughs> was so nice to us. Um, we had just met. He, he had a role in the film and he's let, let us use his bar. Well, he has and a good, he has, a, he had a very good uh, presence. I thought he very was very good. good. He, he did and an a good amazing voice. job. Really amazing good job. voice. I thought. Yeah, and I thought we had really good, I thought we had good chemistry. So That's he's, good. That's important. Yeah. That's the most important thing actually. That's it. So, uh, are, is the script done, or is it? Are you updating the script as you go along, or how does no. it? How does it usually work for you, the way you guys put films together? Well, it's, it's usually that I have a concept, and my wife will write out the script, and I usually give her very little, very little amount of time, right. which she wants to kill me all the time. <laughs> and and we, you know, but she she's such an amazing writer. She writes really really good stuff, and she always has a twists in her her, her project. So it's kind of. Like you think it's going to be this typical action movie, and it's not. Is there like love? Is there like a love aspect to the movie as well, or uh, whether, um, whether I mean it, love meaning obviously there must be brotherly love in this thing. Like, sure, there's uh, brotherly love in there, and Bobby's uh, love interest in there. Matter of fact, she was on your on your show before. Her name was Michelle. Oh yes, Michelle F. Yes, there you go. <laughs> you know, I was I was worried about I was worried about that coming yeah. on here. We've practiced that three times, and I just couldn't get the name right. I Sorry, know, Michelle. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, she plays she's his very love, good actress. She very plays his actress. love interest in this, and, yes. and she's a really good actress. I know she's, and, she's and a nice person. Yes. So, um, yeah. That's it. And um, I, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see it, let alone be in it. But it's it's uh, I love I love the idea that people just come up with ideas, you know. And, and in the old days, you know, there were much less indies. When when I was in Hollywood, everything was well. I mean, all the productions I ever worked on, there was not there were no indies that, back sure. then. And now exactly. now it's a different world. Well, you know what is did with the advent of digital technology, right. it is so much easier. Because one, the first short that I've ever done, it, we shot on super sixteen millimeter, which was completely different. Right. And then you had to cut the film, and you had a, it was a whole different thing, and it was very expensive. And that film, particularly, I think, cost us about maybe thirty, forty thousand. That was wow. for a short. Right. You know, now nowadays with the advent of the you know digital DSLR right. cameras. Anybody can be a filmmaker. Right. And you know? talk about anybody. I, I've already done three shorts, you know. And uh, I actually have a television show called Scriptless Short Films. And we shoot in like four and a half hours. I come up with a concept. I have my regular crew, my regular actors. I just give them the, and we just, we do it, we improvise. And That's it, great. And it's, it's just fun. I do, it, I do it for the pure fun of it because, you know, I'm 61 years old. I'm, I'm looking, I look at life right now as something that's, you know, I've already worked hard in my life. I've, I've, I did the Hollywood thing. To me... I want to try to do things that make like I like this show because I love this show because it it's makes a great me, show. It's a great because show because it's something you know it gives an opportunity to meet people and I love scriptless. I do it for the adrenaline and I do it to help other people and uh, that's a great thing. It's yeah, a great thing. It's wonderful and it's a great thing that you could take like I said digital camera and you yeah. could just express yourself that's it. and you don't have to worry about raising funding and 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 all of these but the, but the bad part about it is when I worked in Hollywood we always got paid and the problem is with nowadays most of the indie films you know it's like you get paid when you get the money you know right. if, if you could sell it you get paid it doesn't stop actors from acting but I think it's not really even though I, I utilize you know free actors also because I have a zero budget for my for my shows um, but it's not really fair you know no it's it's not it's not and the problem is is that because it's so easy to make a film now, right. there are so many films out, so the avenues for distribution yes. are quite, it's a lot more difficult. Right. Because they're so overwhelmed with looking at all these projects, and some of them are not so good, because right. everybody thinks they're a filmmaker. You know, and some of them are good, and the good ones sometimes don't get the, you know, um, the, the exposure end. that it's supposed to get. Right. So, and in return, if it doesn't get picked up, 
like you said, the actors who are working on deferred payment, they don't get paid. I've so. seen some beautiful films that, you know, they're in the, maybe they make it to like a screening and then right to, to video if you're lucky. If you're lucky. Yeah, you know, on Amazon or whatever. And I feel bad for these people because, you know, they put their heart and soul into it and, it, 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 and they make good products. But uh, unless it's like got a billion dollar budget or whatever, you're exactly. not going to see it. You're not going to see it. It's true, and it, or any name actor, actor or actress, right. and it's very. But difficult. even with names, it's tough. I mean, uh, they, uh, recently there was this boxing movie that was uh, was out, and it had like uh, uh, Bal Alec Baldwin, a whole bunch of people. It was out for like a week or like a couple of days, and then it went straight to you know. True, it's true. Yeah, years ago, if you had a, a celebrity, a big star in it, yeah. you'd, you'd automatically again. It goes back to it, I guess. So many films out there, and so many filmmakers. But that's not going to stop you, right? I mean, you're going to keep on doing not. it. There's nothing that's going to stop nothing, you. Nothing, nothing, exactly. That's it. And if I couldn't walk, and and I walked down, and I'll tell you what, the, the the show. That, I mean, the, the clip you gave was so beautiful. I mean, the color was good. I think you know, I, I think you got good. I have the best cinematographer that yeah. you could ever meet. Mark, his name is Mark Fried. I'll just uh, give him a shout out. He's but it looked beautiful. Brilliant. It really did. The sound was good, even though I was concerned because on my computer I had a little problem with it. But it sounded great. I mean, I, it was. It's. It's. Good stuff, man. And you were great, man. Oh, thank you. you. Were scary. I appreciate it. You were scary in that thing. Do you play a scary person, or in, or? Uh... And, and in this project, I play a, 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 a street fighter, or a, you know, in that realm. So he's kind of, he's kind of a tough, but tough guy. With a heart, or no? He's got a heart because he's coming back. He's coming back and he's helping out his brother in the, in the movie. Because I, I can't see you playing a bit. I mean, unless you got the paycheck, I can't see you playing a bad guy. I mean, you just see, you seem like you're too good a person, and you've, you've come out of hell basically that you've been in. You know. Exactly. No, I like I like playing a good-hearted uh, right. character, you know. But of course, I wouldn't be, you know, opposed yeah. to trying the villain role because it's acting, right. and it's you you, you want to try different things. But it, the, the, I think the biggest role you did was to get out, stop being bullied. I mean, it's uh, I mean that's the biggest accomplishment I would imagine. I mean, to to find the self-confidence. Yeah, you to, know, so, and, and just to touch on one one thing about the bullying, when I was and children today have it so much more difficult with bullying because when I was getting bullied, and it was mostly in school, 99% of the school. When it came Friday, 2.30, 3 o'clock, and school was over, I could not wait to go home right. where I was safe. Now, you go home and you put on your Facebook or you put on your Twitter, you can still get bullied. That's you know, social bullying. Bull yeah, exactly. Yeah. You still can get bullied or texted. It's, it's a whole different world. So, you, so now it's a lot more difficult. So it's like you can't escape it. So. Well, I think it's really a wonderful thing that you're doing for the other kids to, to help them. You know, to so they don't. Have, I mean, the teaching and all this, I think, is such a wonderful thing. And is that something you plan to do for the rest of your life? You think? Um, yes. <laughs> that's great. That's it. And that's that's a gift because you're you're helping kids who, who didn't have you know, like, who were in the same spot that you were in when you were a kid. So I think it's a really. And there are a lot thing. of them. People don't realize it. It's like a lot. Yeah. Of, you know, it's not something. Bullying is not like oh one. It's it's just a lot. Well, that's good, and I'm happy that you. Do, I'm happy you're helping kids because I was bullied when I was a kid too, and and because I was also the shortest kid, I was the first guy in the line, all this stuff. I so fought back. I fought back, but still, until you know, until I fought back, I used to get beaten up all the time. But unfortunately, you know, even though I get beaten up all the time, I, I feel so powerful now because I only have one thing left to say, just one thing. That's a wrap. Good night, folks. <laughs>